good morning youtubers what's whooping this is clay with clay's ac and auto repair and clay motion here in grand rapids michigan and this is the clay way if this video is helpful please consider subscribing clicking the notifications sharing them videos give me them sweet old thugs up sending me your nice comments and if you got a question for me automobile related and you're a subscriber to my page hit me up on clay's ac and auto repair on the facebook messenger and for free if i can i will answer your questions remember if anyone else can do it you can do it too, that I promise you. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna jack the vehicle up, set it on a jack stand, make it secure, remove five 21 millimeter lug nuts. Now we're gonna take the wheel and turn it all the way clockwise. Okay, so if you're not used to working on automobiles and you have to take out one of these cotter pins, uh, sometimes they don't bend up quite as easily and you can't shove them out as easy as I can shove this one in and out. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just grab a pair of wire cutters and you can grab on the back side of that. If you can bend it up and get it somewhat straight, then you can use the pliers to pull that out by just grabbing on the little nipple that's sticking out the other side and you'll be able to pull that cotter pin out. Now the reason for that giant explanation is because we want to save this tie rod end, it's good. So we don't want to stick any pickle forks inside there or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that cotter pin out and we're going to use an electric impact or an air impact and we're going to take this nut off. You can take your burns torch and heat this up. If you live in a severely rusted area, taking this off with torches or whatever, that'll save your tie rod from spinning inside there and ruining the tie rod. Then I'm gonna show you how to take this puppy off easy. Now using a 17 millimeter socket, we're gonna screw the nut right off there. If you can't get your nut out of the socket, just simply screw it back on there a little bit and pull it out. Okay, so we wanna remove the tie rod easily. So we're gonna to go to our toolbox and we're gonna get a BMH out. If you don't know what that is, look it up. We're gonna hit the tie rod right here. We're not gonna hit it here. We're not gonna hit it here. We're gonna hit it right here. And we're gonna hit that like a man. Not like a man, boy, like a man. I'm gonna put one hand right here. And it will pop out just as easy as that. Now taking a little bit of penetrant, we're gonna go down here and put penetrant around the wheel speed sensor. Millimeter socket. We're gonna remove the wheel speed sensor bolt. Now sometimes these are rusted in, so you're gonna to wanna to take a pair of pliers and try to twist it so it doesn't break off the tip. Now taking the wheel speed sensor strap, we'll pull it off. You can use a screwdriver, maybe your hands, set it off to the side. Now we're gonna spray down the nuts that hold on our strut and the nuts that hold on our ball joint. Them nuts right there. Now taking a 22 millimeter socket and wrench, we're gonna loosen these nuts that hold our strut on. I'm leaving my bolts in there for the time being, but if you cannot get the bolt to slide out easily like mine, put the nut back on there about halfway down and hit it with a hammer. Just be careful not to ping over the edges of the nut, even though it will drive on if you're using impacts or electric impacts. Now taking the wheel with both arms, we should be able to turn it to expose the bolts for our brake caliper. Now taking a 17 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove both brake caliper bracket bolts. Before we remove the caliper completely, we're gonna remove the 12 millimeter bolt that holds down the brake line and the ABS cable to the strut. It's always good practice while you're taking your brake calipers off to hang them with the bungee cord. And also because if you make YouTube videos like I do, people will complain. 
Now we can turn the wheel back straight. Now we can remove the rotor. Sometimes when you're using OEM equipment, they will have screws where the little screw holes are to remove the rotor. My axle nut is a 32 millimeter, but some of them can be different sizes, including 12 points. We want to ensure after removing the nut that the axle moves freely inside there. If it does not, spray some penetrant inside there and put the nut back on halfway, hit it with a hammer if necessary. Or you can take an air tool and hit the center of the axle to push it backwards. Okay, now we wanna take our 17 millimeter socket and remove our bolts from down below our ball joint. If necessary, take your jack handle off of your jack and insert it onto the end of your breaker bar. Now with that loose, we can take a little bit of our tension with our arm on the bottom and remove our bolts. Here our axles push through. Okay, with the hub off, we're gonna go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna knock this right out of here. So that will expose the snap ring that we need to remove from the inside. We can spray penetrant on the outside of here, which will make this sleeve come out easier. So we're gonna hammer the screwdriver in there and then we're gonna end up prying it up and we're gonna work our way around the outside of the bearing as we move the lip up out of there Keep in mind when you go to reinsert this, that this hole lines up with that hole for our wheel speed sensor. Okay, once you've got that removed, you need a large snap ring pliers or needle nose pliers to remove the snap ring. I'm gonna spray mine down with penetrant and use the screwdriver to release them. Now, you may be possible for you to rent a hub grappler from the local parts store, then you will not need a press. You can also take the bearing down and have one of the local shops press it out for you probably charge you, you know, anywhere from $20 to $40 to press out the old bearing and put in the new bearing. If you do use the hub grappler, make sure you don't use impacts to put it back together because it will damage your bearing. So generally your race will stay on here when you pull it. So you can either heat this up and then tap it on the ground and it will knock the race off of there once you get this nice red and hot. Or you can cut it off there. If you do cut it off there and you get into the metal right here, you wanna take some emery cloth and clean off that so it doesn't affect the race later on. Now we've got that all set up. Go ahead. Okay, the impact is not working, so we're gonna break out the old big guns. Use good old man power. Yeah, hoorah. Ridiculous. Cameron, come in here and hold this table so I don't have to do any work today. I don't feel like holding the bench. Ugh. Man, sometimes. Sometimes, man. I'm lazy. Hey guys, you know it'd be easier than doing it this way? Putting in the press right over there. Be much simpler. Uh -huh. What if we had someone who had the knowledge and the know-how could have told us that from the beginning so we're not struggling over here? Because it's funner to watch you struggle. <laughs>
Okay, so we've just used some of our hub tamer and look at this. Hey, do you keep doing that? Does anybody else here see a problem with this? <laughs> okay, go over to the other side and do it the right way. Should I tell him that it's not square on there and that makes it harder to do it? Yeah. This takes time. All right, she just popped. Sorry I didn't have it on video for you folks, but she's coming out now. Get the push down inside the cup, which is what we want. Right. Oh, we got some BBs for the slingshot. Sweet. <laughs> Once you've got that bearing out of there, we want to make sure that this area does not have any grooves in it. You can take some emery cloth or some fairly fine sandpaper and sand that out if you have any grooves in it. And then obviously our bearing goes in this direction. So she wasn't coming out the way she's supposed to, but now we've got the bearing separator on there to heat it up. So hopefully it starts to come up a little bit. Okay, I ain't too proud of it, but we're definitely getting her off there. We're gonna have to take some memory cloth and clean up some where I got into there, but that ain't really gonna hurt anything. So we'll show you when we're done. Okay, it isn't the ideal situation that we want, but we got that cut off of there. Now we have to get this metal round again. We don't have to worry about too much. I mean, this is only like 3% of the circle that was affected. And if we take and clean that off, our new bearing will slide right on there as it should. Okay, so now when we rub over the top of this, we don't wanna feel anything but smoothness. So we're gonna go ahead and take some emery cloth and we're just gonna clean it like that for a while. Now that we've got that cleaned off and we can't fill any high spots on there and nothing's rubbing against it, it means our bearing's going to press in there easily, we can start the reassembly process. Okay, making sure that we have the right adapter or something that fits on the outside edge of the bearing, we want to push on this edge, not pushing here or pushing in the center because we don't want to ruin the bearing. We've got it back inside the press and we're gonna put the bearing inside there and we're gonna make sure that we're square on our housing. Once you've got your work square, I know his stomach is very distracting, <laughs> uh, you can start pressing in your bearing. It might pop when it goes in there, but it'll go in there smooth once it straightens itself out if you're just a, even a hair kitty wampus but we know we're not damaging the bearing installing it with a press now if your bearing is in there properly it will be flush there and we'll be able to insert your snap ring right there I recommend taking a pick tool and cleaning out the inside lip so your snap ring goes in easily. Now when reinstalling the spindle onto the bearing, here's where most people make a mistake. The whole back of this needs to be held very well and very tight. So in my situation, I'm gonna use my flat spot of my backer so it holds the three separate pieces because these bearings will come apart. And when you go to press this in here, it'll wanna push this back out and we don't want that because that'll just ruin your brand new bearing. So we need to make sure that we install something in there and make sure it stays tight against the work so that, that does not push up as we push down on the spindle. Okay, now we got our setup. 
and we're gonna drive our spindle into our bearing assembly. Now we've got our spindle inserted properly, we're gonna go ahead and insert our snap ring and put our dust cover back in and reassembly is super easy. Okay, so during the assembly process of this uh, wheel bearing that we're doing, I noticed something. I let Junior assemble it and I'm gonna give you about two seconds to figure out what it is. Okay, so what he's done when he went to put the brake caliper back on, the line was twisted. And we can tell that because it has like a couple S's inside the line. He didn't know, no big deal. We'll take the brake caliper back off. We'll just twist it around properly so it doesn't kink the line. According to the information I looked up and I don't have a problem with you double checking me, is the torque specification on the axle nut is 217 foot pounds. So as an added bonus today, I'm gonna show you how to check for a wheel bearing. Okay, so if you have a bad wheel bearing, what you can do is you can place one hand on the spring and through the tips of your fingers, energy is gonna transfer and you're gonna feel it, feel grindy and you can also hear it right there. And then you spin the wheel with your other hand. That'll tell you that that wheel bearing's bad. And in this particular situation, it actually had three well, I hope you're a little bit more informed. And remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. Please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos, and sending me them sweet old thumbs up. You can always send me a message for free if you're a subscriber to my Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. And if I can answer it, I will do it for free. God bless and have the best of days.